Hello, my amazing artists. So today we are going to be starting a new project based on a, another new element of art. So we have gone over so many elements of art already. So I would love to see that you guys can remember what those are. So I'm gonna say an element of art that we've already discussed and made a project for. And when I say that, I want you guys to repeat after me, all right? So our very first project that we did, we worked with rocket ships and we learned all about different types of lines. So everybody say lines. Great. The second project that we completed, we made Larry Loudmouth and we learned all about Larry Loudmouth and the artist Greg Mike who created him. And in order to create Larry Loudmouth, we learned about and cut out lots of different shapes. So the second element of art that we talked about was shapes. So everybody say shapes. Fantastic. Now, the next project that we learned was all about Mr. Roy G. Biv. And Mr. Roy G. Biv helped us to remember the colors of the rainbow in order. And so that element of art that we discussed and learned about was color. So everybody say color. Very good. And then last project, you created an amazing corduroy. So based off of our story of corduroy, you guys learned all about texture and the way that something feels. So that fourth element of art that we've talked about is texture. So say texture. Very good. So we're going to be talking about yet another element of art. This is element of art number five out of seven, which means we only have two more to go after this one. And you will have learned all seven elements of art. So the element of art that we're going to be talking about today is called value. So we're going to repeat that word a couple of times to help us remember it really well. So. I want everybody to say value. Now, in a really deep voice, say value. Now, try it really high pitch, say value. Now, say it really quietly for me, whisper. Wonderful. So we are learning all about the element of value today. And value is really neat. Value is the change of a color from light to dark. So what that might look like is think of a really light blue, like a baby blue, something that you might see in a nursery. And then think about that color changing a little bit darker to a Carolina blue. And from that Carolina blue, we might get to a royal blue, like right here. So that nice bright blue. And then from there, think of that Duke blue, that kind of darker blue. And then a navy blue, that's that really dark blue. So that color is changing. Every color that I just mentioned, we would still call it blue, but they're different values of blue, meaning that color has changed just a little bit. And so we're going to be learning how to create different values with our drawing that we're going to be creating today. And so that drawing is going to be of a pumpkin. And I love the idea of creating a pumpkin for value because pumpkins already have so much value in them. Some pumpkins are really light, almost a yellow. Some are that nice, beautiful, perfect orange. Some are almost red. And then of course, because you have these little ridges, that texture 
in the pumpkins, a lot of times those colors almost change a little bit. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So before we do anything else, I want to show you how to color using texture on your paper with crayons. And it's all in one little trick. It's all about how hard or how soft you press down on your paper with your crayons. So that's something we call pressure. When you press down really hard, you're going to notice that your color is really dark. And when you press down hardly at all, that color is going to be very light. So it's a different value. All right. So I'm going to show you how to create some values on your paper. And then we're going to learn how to draw our pumpkin and color it. All right, friends, here we go. All right, friends. So I have a piece of paper here and I have some crayons. Hopefully you guys have some crayons similar to what I'm using here. Mine's just a regular box. What I'm going to do at first is I'm just going to use a black crayon. Let me fill in that black. There it is right in front. And I'm going to show you the differences in a color when you press down light versus hard. And I'm going to show you how that creates that value that we were talking about. If I take my crayon and I press down as hard as I can, and I want to be careful so I don't break that crayon. If I press down as hard as I can, I get this really nice dark black color. But if, and a lot of times I just move my fingers up on my crayon a little bit. So when I was coloring down here, notice I'm holding my crayon down at the very bottom. That allows me to have a lot more control and allows me to press down without breaking my crayon. If I move my fingers up a little bit higher, and I don't push down quite as hard. I'm still getting that black color, but it's not quite as dark as you see here. Then notice I'm moving my fingers up on that crayon a little bit higher, and I'm going to color even lighter. So I'm still not putting quite as much pressure. I'm not pushing down with my crayon quite as hard. Notice that color going from a really dark black to almost going gray down here. I'm going to color a little bit more. This time I'm pressing down even lighter and I almost have that gray color. I could do it again if I wanted to. Again, now I'm barely putting any pressure. Notice I'm almost holding my crayon on the side and putting as little pressure I'm pushing down as little as I can. And by doing that, I've created this really light gray color versus this really dark black. So this is what we call value or the change of one color from dark to light. Now I could do the same thing with another color. So I chose to use black there, but what if I were to choose a color, for instance, blue. So I have my blue crayon. I can do the same thing press down really hard, I get that really pretty dark blue. And then as I move my hand up on my crayon, I press a little bit lighter and then a little bit lighter. And I can keep doing that until my color is very, very light. So again, I have blue here. Every little bit of this is considered blue, but it goes from a really dark color where I press down hard to a very light color where I hardly push on my crayon at all. So we're going to use that as well as using a couple different colors to create a pumpkin for our project. All right, let's get started drawing our pumpkin. All right, friends, here we go, we're gonna start our artwork. So everybody should have a piece of large drawing paper with them, as well as your pencil. And the first thing we do is always the same. We pick up our pencil and write our name. So on your paper, I want you to write your name like you just saw me, and then your teacher code. Remember that teacher code? First letter of your teacher's first name and your grade. 
Once you've done that, flip that paper over to the other side and we're going to draw on the blank side, the side that you do not see your name on. And then we are going to draw our pumpkin. Now, to draw our pumpkin, we are going to be using some shapes and lines that we have already learned about. We wanna make our pumpkin as large as we can make it, filling up almost the entire paper. So make sure that you are using your space wisely. So look at how large I draw mine and then draw after me. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with an oval. Now, again, wait and watch what I draw first before you draw on your paper. Now we wanna make sure that that oval is nice and large. So, to help us out, I like to make dots on my paper. So I'm gonna come up here towards the top. Notice it's not touching the top of the paper. So my dot is right here. I've got a little bit of space in between my dot and the top of my paper. Then I'm gonna come down. Notice I did not draw a line. I just kind of hovered my pencil over the paper. I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom. Again, not quite touching the bottom and I'm gonna make another dot. Those dots are gonna help me make my first oval nice and large, okay? That way I know that I'm drawing big. So I'm gonna take my pencil and starting at that first dot, I'm gonna draw an oval. Remember that oval looks like a nice big stretched out circle. So, start at that top dot, Make sure your oval comes all the way down to the dot at the bottom of the paper and draw. All right, now if it's hard for you to see my pencil drawing, then I will grab a Sharpie and I will do it with a Sharpie as well. So let's look at how I drew that oval again. I started by making a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom and I drew my oval around so it touches both. Notice I have a very large oval. Not quite touching the top, not quite touching the bottom. Next, we're going to add the sides to our pumpkins because while, while we have this great oval shape, we want to make that texture, those little ridges that pumpkins have in them. And we wanna make our pumpkin nice and wide. So now, start up here at the top if I need to. I can make a little dot at the top and a dot at the bottom, just like you see here. And I'm going to draw a curved line, almost like I'm drawing an oval, but I'm not gonna, have the whole thing. So I'm gonna draw my curved line that comes out and touches the bottom down here. Notice that don't, they don't touch. There's this kind of bump right here in the top and in the bottom. So we're creating that curved line. Then we're gonna do that one more time. Starting up towards the top, notice I made a little mark up here and a mark down here. And one more time on the side, we're gonna draw a nice curved line. That one was a little large, that's okay. Our pumpkin can look as big or as small as we want it to. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So, at the top, Draw my curved line coming down and touching back over here. And one more. And we have the body of our pumpkin. Now, I know I did that really fast, so let's look at what that looks like one more time for the people at home. Ready? I started at the top by making a dot at the top and bottom of my paper. 
and drawing an oval that connects them. Then I drew a curve line and another curve line. Then on the other side, I did the same thing. One curve line, two curve lines. So when I am done, my pumpkin has one, two, three, four, five, five different sections. Now, I have the shape of a pumpkin, but it doesn't quite look like a pumpkin yet. So what is it missing? Well, I'll tell you the big thing it's missing is a stem. Pumpkins have stems. So coming up at the top, I'm going to draw a curve line. Yours does not need to look just like mine. It can look any way that you want. And I'm going to draw this kind of bendy looking rectangle. And now I have something that looks more like a pumpkin. So let's look at that again. This time I'm not going to make it bend quite as much. Maybe it's coming a little straighter. Pumpkins have all sorts of different types of stems. This one's a little straighter, a little shorter, and standing up a little higher. All right. Now you have a pumpkin. Let's add a few details. First detail I want to do is I want to add a line that shows that my pumpkin is sitting on the ground. This is called a horizon line. A horizon line separates the sky up here and the ground down here at the bottom. Then if I want to, I could add vines. So let's say my pumpkin has not been pulled off the vines yet and it's still growing. I could draw some curvy little lines over here to represent those vines for my pumpkin. So use those swirly lines that we have learned about. And then I could create leaves off of those if I wanted to. Really give some cool details. There's so many things I can do here. Now, we have officially finished drawing our pumpkin. So now it's time to create that value. Now, there's a couple things that we're going to do. You're going to use your crayons. I want us to use at least three colors, okay? You're going to use at the very least, red, orange, and yellow. Now, if you have a box of crayons like, crayons like mine, then you have a couple different choices that you could also include. For instance, I have this crayon here, which is called red orange, which means I can use this when I'm doing my values in between red and orange. I have this one called yellow orange, so I can, again, put that one in between my yellow and my orange. So I have lots of different colors. You could even use, this one's called Scarlet. It's a little bit more red than your red orange. But I have all of these different colors. And what I want you to look at first before we do anything else is look at the colors. Even though we have some that are different colors like that red and that yellow, this is showing what we call a value scale. My color is going from dark, that red, to slowly getting lighter until we get to that yellow, which is the lightest color we have. And we're gonna use these as we color. We're also going to be using that trick that we talked about of pushing down hard versus lighter on our paper. So find those colors. And then find your red. We're gonna start with our red. Now, your red is really what we're going to use to trace. Now, I drew mine with black Sharpie, so I already have kind of traced mine. But yours has been done in a pencil. So what I want you to do is on top of that pencil line, around the whole thing, I want you to color with your red. Press down nice and hard. We want a nice red color. Notice I'm going all the way around my oval. I'm not coloring a huge area, I'm just kind of tracing over top of my lines. I'm gonna do the same thing 
in each of these curved lines right here. So again, tracing over my lines for the body of my pumpkin. You're not going to use this for the stem or the leaves or that horizon line. Just for the body of the pumpkin. All right guys, so now I have used my red and traced over all my lines. So I'm going to now pick up my next color. If you have a scarlet or that red orange, that would be that color. If not, you're just using orange and you're gonna press down really, really hard. And I want you to color just a little bit of your pumpkin in. Now my scarlet, it's very close to red, so I'm not gonna color a lot because I don't want my pumpkin to be completely red. I want most of it to be orange. So I'm only coloring a small, very skinny line. Think that thin line that we learned about. Again, I'm gonna do this on each one. Layer by layer is how we're going to color our pumpkin to show that value. Now notice, not only is my color, my scarlet color, a little bit lighter red, I'm also not pushing down, or pressing down with my crayon quite as hard as I did with my red. That's why this color is getting just a little lighter. And I'm gonna do that for all parts of my pumpkin because I want each part to have all of my colors in them. Again, notice I still have a ton of space for my oranges. color neatly and then when you're done you if you're only working with one orange that would be where you colored really hard now you're gonna try to not push down a, as hard and you're going to color in another area pressing down a little lighter I happen to have that red orange this is the darkest orange I'm going to use so I'm coloring in another area. Another way to do this is to maybe start by drawing a circle or that oval I should say inside and coloring that in. So notice I have a little bit of a thicker area with this orange that I'm coloring in than I did with my red. Again, I'm coloring in each area of my pumpkin with my colors in the same order. If I need to turn my paper while I'm coloring to make it easier, you can do that just like I am. All right, friends, so I finished with my red orange. Here comes my orange. This is going to be one of my larger areas, so if I need to, I can draw a line, that curved line, or in this case, an oval in the middle, to represent where I'm going to color in. Notice I'm getting less and less white space each time I color. So again, I have this really pretty orange here. Notice my colors have kind of shifted. They've gone darker and they're slowly getting lighter. That's that value we talked about. Do the very best that you can here. Remember, it does not have to be perfect. Your artwork does not have to look just like mine or like your neighbors. Even though we're all doing the same thing, everybody's artwork is going to look different and that's the beauty of art, even when we do the same things, our art always turns out 
unique, meaning that it looks different and it tells something about each one of us. If our artwork was all the same, if everybody's artwork looked exactly the same, it would be so boring to look at because once you would have seen one, you would see them all. So the fact that even when we're drawing the same thing, we're coloring in the same way, they're all gonna look different is exactly what we want to see here. So I have colored in the majority of my pumpkin now. I still have two colors though. And those are gonna finish my pumpkin off. Make sure I have lots of orange, reds, and yellows in there. So, my next color is that yellow orange. So this is an even lighter orange. I'm coloring in all but a little space in each one of my pumpkin sections with this orange because the last color I'm gonna use is that yellow. Notice this color a little bit lighter. Again, if you don't have all of these oranges, it's okay. Just don't push down quite as hard each time. Lift that crayon up just so that there's barely touching at this point. And then you should hopefully have a yellow to color that last part in. Notice I'm coloring neatly. I'm not leaving a ton of white spaces as I color. As I'm going around, I'm curving those lines to color as well. I'm even turning that paper. We want to get that entire pumpkin filled in, okay? And then my last color for my pumpkin is that yellow. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fill in the rest of that with yellow. Now if I feel like maybe there's too much yellow there, I could come back and color over a little bit of that yellow with some orange on the edges. And they're gonna kind of mix together. See how that works? Pretty cool. I'm gonna do this for each one. I really like the way that those kind of blended together. So coming back with a little bit of that orange is kind of gonna be what I do for each one. Coloring just a little bit of orange over top of my yellow so it's not so yellow. And when you're all done, Look at this amazing pumpkin that you just created with so many different values. That change of the color from dark to light. So in this case, not only did our pumpkin go light to dark in oranges, it went from red to orange to yellow because red is darker than orange and orange is darker than yellow, which again creates that value. So, now that you have colored in that amazing pumpkin, you're gonna use your crayons and you're going to start to decorate the rest of your pumpkin. So that could be coloring in your stem, your sky, your grass, any detail, any part of your paper that you still have white on. I want you guys to use those crayons and as neatly as you can, I want you to finish coloring. And then I will come back in just a few and show you my finished project for mine. So as I continue to color these details and I will show you what mine looks like all completed and then I cannot wait to see yours. All right, friends, this is my finished project. As you can see, just like we had before, I've got that pumpkin with all those awesome values that have been added and then I just went through and I added color to the rest of my artwork. So as I'm done, there's really nothing that has been left white. So 
I want you guys, now that we have worked through adding values, that's that vocabulary word, that element of art we talked about today, with our colors going from dark to light. Now that you have the values in the pumpkins, I want you to color the rest of that picture until you have colored in your whole paper. And I cannot wait to see what these amazing pumpkins look like when I return to school. So don't forget, color the whole thing as neatly as you can. Don't rush. It is not a race. Make sure that that name and teacher code is on the back and have fun most importantly. All right, bye friends.